Hi and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. One of the most awesome things about alcohol-based markers is the ability to blend with them and not just with one color. Today I'm going to be teaching you a blending technique using two different colors on actually two opposite ends of the spectrum. We're going to be coloring the beautiful bird image from the stamp set Free as a Bird. And this is the card we're going to be creating together. And if this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you click the subscribe button down below and make sure you click that small bell icon that's next to it. That will give you notifications when I'm live here on YouTube as well as when I upload a new video. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's card. Here's a close up of the card we're going to be creating together. Isn't this pretty? And this is quite simple so don't let that coloring intimidate you. Let's start with the focal point. I'm going to begin by protecting my work surface with one of the small grid papers. Remember you're going to be able to find all these supplies in my online store at Lisa's Stamp Studio. And since I'm using alcohol-based markers, I'm going to be using thick Whisper White cardstock. I've pulled out this absolutely beautiful image of the birds here on the branch, and that comes from the stamp set called Free as a Bird. This stamp set will be featured in the current Stampin' Up! annual catalog. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you would like a complimentary copy of this catalog, as well as the holiday catalog, head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on Contact Me. I'm going to be using Memento Ink. This is a water-based ink pad which is going to ensure that I don't have any bleeding between the alcohol based markers and the ink itself. You can see how large the stamp is in relation to the ink pad so I prefer to ink it face up so I don't miss an area. I'm going to hold my ink pad upside down and I'll just tap onto my image and then I'm going to stamp that here. I am going to punch this out so I'm not real particular on placement. While we're doing some stamping, I'm going to go ahead and push this off to the side for just a second and I'm going to bring in a scrap piece of pool party cardstock and I've pulled out one of the small stitched nested labels. You're going to see it here. This product is in the annual catalog. I absolutely love it for the graduated sizes. I've got my Sizzix die cutting machine here and I'm going to place my cardstock right on top and I'll place that die here. If you prefer, you can actually die cut after you stamp the greeting. It's just a matter of preference. We've got that small label and I'm going to come back into my Memento ink and I'm using the words from that exact same stamp set that say thanks for being you. I'll go ahead and ink that up and we'll stamp those right down inside. I'm going to set that greeting aside. We'll use that in just a few minutes but I'm going to come back here to my cardstock and I am still going to protect my work surface since I'm using alcohol based markers. I want to teach you the coloring techniques of blending two different colors together. Now I have an image that's already finished. I'll only focus on one area right now just to teach you the blending. The Stampin' Blends markers come in a combo pack or you can buy them individually. So there's a light and a dark for each shade. I like to work with the lightest shade first for this technique. I'm going to use the brush tip on this marker even though this is a very detailed area and I'll show you why. I find that it blends a lot easier. I'm just going to brush on some color here in the belly. I am not particular about where it's going to go. I'm just focusing in the center. The alcohol in these markers requires a few seconds for it to evaporate and I do recommend that you're a little bit patient with this technique because if you don't you're going to find that there's still a little bit of bleeding primarily going from one color to the other. You don't want to muddy up these outside image lines. I'm also using the pool part combination and just like before I'm going to use the lightest color. This time I'm coloring in the head and around those areas I put that petal pink color. I'm not worried about any colors bleeding into one another. Then I'll need a couple seconds for the alcohol to dissipate as well because what we're going to do now is we're going to use the dark shade. I'm going to add a little bit of definition in this right over here on this one side. I'm going to switch over to the dark pool party and this time I'm using those sketch lines inside the image as my cheat marks. This is going to help provide me with some idea on the definition of the image. Letting that evaporate for a few seconds, the magic with the blending comes with going back to the lightest shade. So I'm going to come back to the light petal pink and I'm going to blend the light and the dark together. You're going to see too how I'm also going over some of that pool party shade. Again, allowing that to evaporate for a few seconds. I'm going to come back to the light pool party and I'm going to blend those dark and light colors of that outside shading as well. This is pretty in itself, but I also want to give you another tip about using the color lifter. I actually like to call this a color mover because not only does it lift the color, but it actually can move the color. One of the things a lot of people don't realize about the color lifter is it actually can help move color back with inside the perimeter of your image. So let me give you an example here. For this, I'm using the chisel tip and let's just say I accidentally color outside the line here. 
Once you give this alcohol a few minutes to evaporate, you can then come in and move the color. I'm gonna turn the cardstock to make it easy for my hand, and I'm gonna be using the chisel tip here on my color lifter, and you're gonna see that there's absolutely no color to this. Kind of think of it as an alcohol eraser. I'm working outside the color line, and you're gonna notice that it kind of turns like a gray color. That's the alcohol. As it evaporates, it's actually going to move the color back within the line. So that same technique we can actually use here on our image to soften up these colors. So I'm gonna use the thicker end this time, and I'm gonna come inside here and I'm just gonna lightly brush on a little bit of color. In order for this to become its true color, it will need a few minutes to evaporate. And when it's all finished, it's going to look like this. I used the two and one quarter inch circle punch in order to punch it out. That product is also in the annual catalog. Now we're ready to put our card together. I love to use my silicone craft sheet here in the stamp studio. It keeps my work surface sticky free. I'm gonna be using some of the beautiful Bird Ballad Designer Series paper. I'm gonna flip that over right here on my silicone craft sheet, and I'm gonna line the outside edges with some adhesive. This is one reason why I love the silicone craft sheet, because if I get close to the edge, and some of it ends up on my work surface, I'm fighting that sticky spot the whole time I'm crafting. But here, it rubs right off. That'll now get layered here on a piece of pool party cardstock. I have all the cutting dimensions down in the video description below if you are here visiting from YouTube. I opted to use a base cardstock of Whisper White. I did score it in half right before you joined me. If you've watched my videos before, you know I'm a big fan of the bone folder for the nice crisp edges. And then this layer is going to get adhered on top. Once again, you'll see me using that silicone craft sheet. And then I'll border this cardstock on the base of our card. Remember this image here? Well, now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to add a little bit of ribbon to the back side. Now there's several ways that you can do this. I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive here just to help me hold this down. This is about 11 inches of the silver metallic edge ribbon. Isn't this pretty? So I'm going to leave one raw end facing out on one of my sides and then I'm going to zigzag this. The easiest way is to use a little piece of scotch tape here. So I've got a piece here and I'll tack that down. Now, if you're using this ribbon technique on scrapbooking, make sure that you're not using regular household tape because that is not photo safe. I'm gonna add dimensionals to the back side that will help elevate this on the card. Now, I wanna give you a tip about the dimensionals as well. If you place them here and here, remember that this is loose so these can lift it. Instead, what I'm gonna do is add another one here in the center and then I'm gonna use my take your pick tool with the paper piercing tool attachment to help me lift off those paper backings. I love how it corrals them too. It makes it easier to clean up. I chose to mount this near the lower third of my card base. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack that down here. And remember that greeting? Well, we've got that here and we're gonna go ahead and add that as well. I don't wanna put a dimensional here, but I do wanna put a dimensional here so I have a little elevation. If you were to put a dimensional on both sides, this is gonna be lopsided because of the elevation difference. So I'm gonna turn this upside down and on this side, I'm gonna add a little bit of adhesive. And on this side, I'm going to add a dimensional and I'll take off that backing. Now you can see what's gonna happen is the tag is gonna fall very nicely, even here where it's already raised, and then raised here on this side. And I thought this needed just a little bit of bling here to help bring in that beautiful silver metallic edge ribbon. And I'm gonna be using one of the small rhinestones that are here. They've got glue dots already on the back. I'm gonna attach that right down here near the bottom. Very simple, but very elegant. The designer series paper really is showcased well with the blending of these birds. Here's the card we made together today and the one I made before you joined me. No two are gonna be exactly alike, so experiment and have fun. If you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.